Good day my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. The Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary, previously known as the Feast of Our Lady of Victory, is commemorated on October 7. This date marks the anniversary of the pivotal triumph of the Holy League's combined fleet over the Ottoman navy at the Battle of Lepanto in 1571. Today, we will discuss a pressing victory we are praying for on this significant day, as called for by the Pope, a victory over the escalating violence and wars around the globe. Karen from John Lepps joins us today to delve into the latest news from Pope Francis. Pope Francis urges the people of God to pray. He has received revelations from Almighty God, asking priests to open their churches and invite the faithful to pray the Holy Rosary and engage in fervent prayer before the tabernacle. He encourages us to visit our local parishes and churches. He has warned that the conflicts in the Middle East and the current situation in Ukraine and Crimea are becoming increasingly perilous. To combat this, we must pray for God's mercy to envelop the world and enlighten our leaders through the Holy Spirit, enabling them to discern good from evil and strive together for peace and love. Additionally, he asks priests to simplify the Eucharist and imbue it with love. Dear friends and faithful followers, with hearts full of hope and gratitude, we warmly welcome each of you who have joined us here today on our channel. We thank you for being part of this community, where we gather in the name of faith, love, and solidarity. May the peace and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you at every moment of your life, guiding and comforting you, and helping you to overcome all challenges, no matter how great they may seem. His eternal love is our light in darkness, our refuge in times of need, and our hope in moments of despair. As we gather here today, we cannot help but turn our thoughts and prayers toward the people of Podgora, Croatia, who are facing a terrible crisis. The devastating floods in Podgora have wreaked havoc on this coastal town, causing widespread damage and leaving a lasting impact on the hearts and lives of its residents. The catastrophe unfolded after a ferocious storm struck the town, bringing relentless rains that seemed unending. Torrential downpours caused rivers to swell beyond their banks, transforming tranquil streams into raging torrents that swept through streets and neighborhoods. Within moments, floodwaters surged into homes, filling them with mud and debris, and washing away not just possessions, but the memories and moments that people had cherished for years. The sheer scale of the destruction was unimaginable. Streets that once bustled with life were now submerged under a murky sea of water, while homes, businesses, and landmarks were left in ruins. Heart-wrenching scenes of families desperately trying to save what little they could from the flood's relentless grip were common. People waded through knee-deep water, clinging to their belongings, while others sought refuge on rooftops or in safer, higher ground. It is impossible not to feel the weight of their suffering as we imagine the fear and uncertainty that must have gripped their hearts in those terrible moments. The coastal town of Podgora, known for its scenic beauty in serene beaches, was hit hardest by the storm on Saturday afternoon. In just over an hour, an extraordinary 143 liters of rain fell per square meter, overwhelming the town's infrastructure and leaving it vulnerable to further damage. As the Mediterranean storm continued into its third day, the southern Dalmatian region, particularly near Makarska, bore the brunt of the violent weather. Reports from Dalmasija News indicate that while other parts of the region experienced thunderstorms and large hail, Podgora has been hit the hardest. The rain, relentless and unforgiving, has shown no signs of stopping. Every fire-fighting unit in the area has been deployed to aid in rescue and recovery efforts. Streets, courtyards, and basements are flooded, and even the town's iconic promenade, a symbol of its cultural life, has not been spared. 
Unofficial reports suggest that the floodwaters have been so powerful that they have swept several cars into the sea, a sobering reminder of the force of nature. Power outages have plunged over 3,000 households into darkness, from eastern Podgora to Drenik, adding another layer of hardship to an already dire situation. As the storm rages on, ominous clouds loom over the Adriatic Sea, moving menacingly toward areas that have already been overwhelmed by the flood. The temperature, too, has dropped dramatically, from a warm and comfortable 23 degrees Celsius to a chilling 12 degrees Celsius, exacerbating the suffering of those affected. Gon Basel, the head of the Tsipi Fire Brigade, has described the situation as catastrophic, noting that rescue teams working along the Makarska River are doing everything in their power to control the floodwaters. Despite these extraordinary challenges, there remains a sense of calm resilience among the people of Padra. A local resident reported to Dalmasija News that while the rain continues, firefighters and heavy machinery are working tirelessly, and there is no panic. Their strength and determination in the face of such adversity are a testament to the human spirit. In these trying times, we must remind ourselves that we are never alone in our struggles. Jesus is always by our side, offering us his love, his strength, and his comfort. His presence is a source of unwavering support, lifting us up when we are down and carrying us through the darkest moments of our lives. Faith in Him provides us with the courage to face the seemingly insurmountable challenges that life presents. As we reflect on the suffering of the people of Podgra, let us also reflect on the power of faith to heal and to restore. We pray that through the grace of God, the people of Podgra will find the strength to rebuild their lives and restore their community. In moments like these, it is solidarity, love, and mutual support that will help them recover what has been lost. Let us join together in prayer, asking that God's peace and grace may descend upon this town, bringing with it hope, healing, and a brighter tomorrow. Together, with faith in our hearts and love for one another, we will overcome any obstacle, just as the people of Podgora will rise from the ashes of this disaster. May God bless them and may He continue to guide us all, now and forever. Thank you, dear friends, for being with us today. We appreciate your support and your prayers. If you haven't already, please remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel to stay connected with us and receive more uplifting content in the days to come. Your presence and your prayers mean the world to us, and together, we can continue to spread love, faith, and hope to those in need. In the midst of this crisis, the solidarity and love among the people of Podgora have shown brighter than ever before. Neighbors, friends, and even strangers have come together in an extraordinary display of compassion, working side by side to support and rescue families affected by the floods. Despite the scarcity of resources, they have selflessly shared what little they have, precious food, water, and shelter, not just as material aid but as powerful symbols of spiritual encouragement. In times of adversity, human love takes on an almost divine quality, serving as a wellspring of hope and motivation. It is this collective love that has fortified the community's resolve, helping them stand firm in their battle against nature's overwhelming force. These people are not only facing the immediate dangers of the flood but also beginning the daunting task of rebuilding their shattered lives, slowly but surely reclaiming what has been lost. Each act of kindness, no matter how small, becomes a vital thread in the larger tapestry of recovery, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the belief in a brighter future. These efforts have not only demonstrated the strength of the community but have also underscored their enduring perseverance and faith in a better tomorrow, despite the overwhelming challenges that lie ahead. Every small gesture, every moment of shared support, has painted a beautiful picture of humanity, where individuals are united by a common purpose, 
to weather the storm together. As the floodwaters raged, rescue teams swiftly mobilized, arriving at the scene with a single mission, to save lives and mitigate the disaster's devastating impact. These brave men and women worked tirelessly, wading through the treacherous waters and navigating submerged streets on rescue boats to reach those stranded in the most isolated areas. In the darkness of the night, the lights of the rescue teams gleamed like beacons of hope, illuminating the path forward for those overwhelmed by fear and uncertainty. For many of Podgora's residents, life has been turned completely upside down. Those who once cherished their tranquil town now stand in the midst of heartbreaking devastation, witnessing the destruction of their homes and the collapse of their way of life. Many families are struggling to find temporary shelter, grappling with the reality that they must now learn to adapt to a new and harsher existence. The loss is not only physical but deeply emotional, as people are forced to let go of the life they once knew and search for ways to survive in the face of disaster. We want to end wars, and the Rosary spreads peace while fostering faith. Ideally, many conversions will occur when we come together and pray this powerful prayer globally. Could you, Karen, once again share the specifics of the Pope's call for prayer and fasting, especially for global peace, for those who have just joined us? On this beautiful feast day of October 7, when numerous victories have occurred through Our Lady, the Pope is requesting that at 7 p.m. local time, wherever we are in the world, we unite in praying the Rosary. Perhaps you can encourage your groups to come together and participate. We pray for peace and for the beginning of the Jubilee Year of Reconciliation and Healing. This is a powerful act, and I hope people realize how important it is for everyone to pray everywhere. I truly hope this podcast reaches far and wide because not enough people are discussing it, and we need to spread the word so that more can join. Regardless of personal feelings about the Pope, he is the head of the Catholic Church, and as faithful children, we should heed his call to prayer and fasting, especially through the Rosary, on this significant date, October 7th. This day commemorates the victory of Our Lady of the Rosary during the Battle of Lepanto in 1571. The Holy League, despite being outnumbered, triumphed over the Ottoman navy under the banner of Our Lady of Victory, largely through the power of the Rosary. That moment serves as a lasting example for us today, and it is our duty, as Catholics and Christians, to take up that same battle cry, the Rosary, which remains our weapon in the fight against evil. Our Lady is known to crush the head of Satan, and it is our responsibility as members of the Church to follow our spiritual leader, Pope Francis. While we may have differing opinions on his leadership, he is still our spiritual father in the faith. Let us pray that love fills our hearts and dispels hatred because this lack of love is the source of the division we see in the world today. When there is disunity, hatred, and sin within the church, it reflects on the world outside as well. I truly believe that the disunity we are experiencing is even affecting nature, as evidenced by the increase in natural disasters. But if we turn to our Blessed Mother, she will not refuse us the grace we seek. Remember the miraculous medal, where some rays of grace were not shining because people didn't ask for them. Let us ask for all the graces we can, especially for peace in the world. In Sister Faustina's diary, Divine Mercy in My Soul, Jesus tells her to ask for great things because it displeases Him when we ask for small favors. He is God, He can do anything. We should not hesitate to constantly ask for peace. Given the current fragile state of the world, particularly in places like Israel, Russia, and Ukraine, prayer is the most important thing we can offer. We are on the edge of potential disaster, and the only solution lies in turning to God in prayer. Innocent people, like those in Lebanon, continue to suffer. Regardless of their faith, Christian or Muslim, 
they are dying because they live in areas affected by war. There is no justification for such violence, and words cannot fully express the tragedy of war. Right now, prayer is our only recourse, and the Pope recognizes this. We are all part of the human family, and when we pray, it must come from the heart. People often debate whether to pray in Latin or Aramaic, but what matters is that the prayer is sincere. Jesus reveals his sacred heart to us, and our blessed mother has her immaculate heart. Recently, the chaste heart of Saint Joseph has also been revealed, urging us to pray from the heart. Let's increase our fervor in prayer and spread this message through social media. Let everyone know about the 7 p.m. prayer on October 7 because it is desperately needed. Have you heard about the battle in Seville, Spain? When I visited my sister, who is a nun, she shared the story of King Ferdinand's devotion to the Blessed Mother. Against overwhelming odds, he and his forces were victorious because of his deep devotion and faith. This shows us that no matter how dire the situation seems, turning to our Blessed Mother is always the right choice. In closing, I'd like to reiterate a viral message, which, although it may not entirely come from Pope Francis, carries the essence of his call. He has asked for this day of fasting and prayer on October 7, and I believe he was divinely inspired to do so. Please join in prayer. It is believed that Pope Francis may have received a divine revelation from God himself. The Pope is calling for priests to open the doors of their churches and invite people to pray the Holy Rosary and engage in deep prayer before the tabernacle. He urges us to visit our local parishes or the nearest church. In his warning, he has spoken about the escalating conflict in the Middle East, as well as the war in Ukraine and Crimea, highlighting the increasing danger that these wars could spread further. These are the words of the Pope, and they reflect the urgency of the situation as the war intensifies at a frightening pace. To prevent further escalation, we must pray fervently, asking God to flood the world with His mercy and to enlighten the hearts of world leaders through the Holy Spirit, helping them to discern between good and evil, and to unite in the pursuit of peace and love. Pope Francis has also asked priests to make the celebration of the Eucharist simple and filled with love. This is vital, as the Eucharist is most powerful when celebrated with a spirit of love and humility. Whether one participates in the Novus Ordo, Latin Rite, Maronite, or Eastern Rite, what matters is that we pray with love. As you mentioned, Karen, the Holy Spirit speaks the language of love. So let us pray. Wherever you are in the world, take a moment each day to drop everything and pray. In addition to praying the three Our Fathers and three Hail Marys as suggested, we are encouraged to pray the Holy Rosary, especially on October 7 at 7 o'clock p.m. If possible, start the day with fasting or offer a small sacrifice for peace in these difficult times. Do you have any final thoughts before we close with Pope Francis' prayer for peace? We are united as brothers and sisters in this. Let's spread love and follow the call, now, let's join in Pope Francis' final prayer, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O Mary, our Mother, we come before you once more. You know the burdens and struggles that weigh heavily on our hearts in this hour. We lift our gaze to you, trusting ourselves to your heart. You, too, have faced challenges and fears, but you were courageous and bold. You entrusted everything to God and responded with love, offering yourself without reservation. As the woman of charity, you quickly went to help Elizabeth, provided for the couple at Cana, and stood firm at Calvary, bringing hope amidst sorrow. You gave courage to the frightened disciples, and with them, you welcomed the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, we ask for your loving gaze upon us, as we trust in your Son, Jesus. 
O oh mother, in this time of oppression and war, wipe the tears of those who mourn, awaken us from the stupor of indifference, and disarm our hearts from violence. Fulfill Isaiah's prophecy, they will beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Turn your maternal gaze upon our troubled world, help us rediscover peace and brotherhood. Intercede for the suffering, the poor, the sick, and protect our common home. O Queen of Peace, transform hearts filled with hatred, silence the noise of weapons, and inspire peace. Untangle the knots of selfishness, dispel the darkness of evil, and fill us with your tender care. O Mother, Salus Populi Romani, pray for us. Amen.